My Umma, my Umma, he will say, Rasulullah on that day. What gives me an objective view of life? Me being a Muslim. What shapes my whole world view? Me being a Muslim. But similarly, what shapes you as a Muslim must be that you give da'wah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith that can be found in the Arba'in al Nawawiyah, the 40 hadith of al Nawawi, when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yu'minu, ahadukum hatta yuhibu li ahihi, la yuhibu li nafsihi. You are not a true believer unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Cars? Money? Cars? Money? No. Building? Of course not. What we love the most is what brothers and sisters. Come on, what's taking us to Jannah? Islam, Iman, this is what we love the most. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, the thing that you love the most, you must give to others. If you want to be defined as a mu'min. Do you see, dawah is actually something that defines who we are. It's a defining feature of the Muslim. Because of the saying of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Similarly, brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give us a purpose. I ask you a question. What's your purpose in life? Worship Allah and trust the Jannah. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other people are saying to go to Jannah. We know this. This is our primary purpose. But what is another purpose? To give dawah. Well. This is very interesting. Because the Muslim, and you can see in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the stories of the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them all, that they didn't just worship Allah the way we think worshipping Allah is. They just pray and fast and do, and do dhikr and read Quran. They went further than this. They wanted to spread the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it was the thing, brothers. And listen very carefully, it was the thing that gave them life, defined them as a live human being. Not in terms of having a soul, but as a drive, as a perspective, as a purpose in life. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu stajeebu lillahi wa liwa rasooli ila da'akum ima yuhyikum. Oh you who believe, raising your status to people of amana. Oh you who believe. Respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger to that which gives you life. Yuhyikum. The Mufassirun, those who explain the Quran, do you know what they say about this verse? That if you don't respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger, then we're dead people. We're dead people. Our hearts are dead. So brothers, we know what defines us, what gives us purpose, and what would enter us into Jannah are those people, يَبْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Those who call to God, to Islam. As Allah says in the Qur'an, وَدُعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ Call to the way of your Lord. But in order to do this, brothers and sisters, there are some challenges. And I want to quickly talk to you about what are the contemporary challenges today. The challenges that we face as an Ummah, it's going to be a bit dark, it's going to be a bit depressing, but at the end, as the Qur'an tells us, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The first challenge, brother, is a media challenge. We have the media outlets, especially in Britain and America, pointing the finger at Islam and the Muslims. The Muslims are backwards. The Muslims are wrong. Something's wrong with Islam. It needs to change. It needs to have a reformation, just like what happened to Christianity in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. It needs to change in a very famous newspaper called The Sun, that's read by millions and millions of British people. Trevor Kavanaugh, a very famous anti-Islamic rhetorician, has a lot of rhetoric about Islam. He said the following statement. Politicians of all parties tiptoe on eggshells, desperate to avoid offending an increasingly powerful and assertive minority. 
talking about the Muslims. 